Hello everybody, this episode is going to be a little bit different than our adventure videos. We have one week until we are taking the van out west on our big road trip. We just got back from Vermont and if you didn't see that episode, well, we got stuck on the side of a mountain road in the snow and had to get the van towed out. So that was not the best experience. Nobody was injured. Our van wasn't damaged at all. So we got really, really lucky, but we're here and ready to get the van prepped and ready to go for our big adventure out west. So today it's going to be more of a van build series. We're doing three main upgrades. The first one is an LED light bar, which you may have already seen if you saw the Vermont episode. The second is getting our van's tires upgraded to KO2 all terrains. I cannot wait to see how they look. And the third one is an oil change, fuel filter change, and an air filter. So we'll be doing that and topping off our DEF making sure we are ready to go for the road. Okay, so when I was looking for a spot to mount the light bar, I was trying to figure out, do I want to do it on top? But since I have a DIY rack, it's kind of sitting far back on the roof and it's not going to be uh, that good for the light bar because the roof of the van is actually going to block the lights from penetrating down on a downward angle and hitting the ground. So you're not, it's not going to be as effective. So that's why I decided to do it in front of the engine. And I was going to do it right here, um, nailed into the license plate. But this is actually pretty flimsy. So I didn't want my light bar bouncing around. So my next option was taking this off and drilling two holes into the bumper itself. And that's it's harder than it looks because you have to take the entire bumper off to get to the metal. So I was like, OK, that option's out as well. And lastly, there's two screws that are on this, uh, this stepping plate to, I guess, clean the windshield or look in the engine or something. There's one, and there's the other one. And this is a T45 Torx bit with an M8 1.25 or 125 millimeter thread, I think, something like that. So what I did, I went to a local Auto body shop and got M25 1.25 by 35 millimeters. So these to replace it because these are too short. And then I bought aluminum from Home Depot. And this bar is a little too thin, you can bend it. So what I did, I couldn't find anything thicker than this. So I just got two that I'm drilling together to give it more strength and make it more durable. So here's the light bar that I got from Amazon. Again, it's an eye light. And this is 25 inches and it comes with the wiring harness kit. So that's pretty nice. And it's pretty easy to set up. So let me show you what it does. So there's three anchor points on the light bar. And some come with only two. Some have more depending on the size. This is 25 inches. And this is what it comes in out of the box. I put these on already. But basically, if you put an Allen key in here, you can move this around to fit your needs. So I actually moved the two outsides. So with the 35 millimeter, I can get that deep. I might put a washer on, slide that into place, and screw that down to the hole, like so. There's plenty more room, I'm just finger tightening it so I can't get it too tight. But now I have a nice sturdy platform for the light bar. So what I'm going to do right now is paint this black and then we'll get it bolted down into place. So I'm going to use truck bed liner to paint this and I went with aluminum over other metals because aluminum doesn't rust. All right so from a wiring perspective here's the setup with this that comes with the wiring harness which I highly recommend getting because you want to get a relay so the voltage doesn't blow out the switches okay so from the light bar you have the end of your wiring harness and there's two in this kit because you could hook up two lights with one switch if you wanted to and then following this line you have your relay which you're just gonna bolt to the chassis and then you have your power which has an inline fuse here and you can technically hook this up to a battery, but I'm going to be taking this ending off here 
and connecting this to our fuse panel, our fuse box inside the van. And then this one I'll just connect to the ground of a chassis here. And then this goes to the switch itself, which connects right here via this little adapter. And then you have your switch. All right, so I got everything secured nice and tight. This ain't going anywhere. Make sure you tighten all of these ones too and that. But this is a pretty cheap rack system for your light bar. Just one aluminum bar and that's it. So my wiring harness comes with an additional hookup for a secondary light. I just put heat shrink on it and taped it up just to ensure that these don't touch. So I would do that if I were you. And I'm probably gonna tape them up onto this wire so they're nice and secure. All right, so I put the relay on this ground screw and connected the negative cable to the ground as well. And now I need to get the power into the chassis to the fuse box. So I'm gonna take this little grommet off and this is gonna go right into the foot pedal area of the van. Looks like this. I didn't realize this till right now, but I need to put a spade connector on here. So I'm gonna have to cut this, put a spade and add some heat shrink because I'm gonna put a 16 gauge wire coming through here to connect to this from the fuse panel because this is just a little too short. All right, so I cut through this and now I have, now I have the piece for the, the switch. And that's gonna go right through there. Now I need to connect to the hot wire. So I just found myself a nice 16 gauge wire here. That'll be for the switch. That'll connect to the fuse panel and a spade to here. All right, so now I have my 16 gauge wire that's going to the fuse box, connected to the spade connector that is connected to the relay. That's connected to the relay here. And now this piece goes through like so into there. And I'll see you on the other side. I'm just gonna heat shrink this up real quick. Now I'll heat shrink it up after. Next you need one of these out of fuse connectors and open the fuse panel. And the goal is to find a fuse in here that is power on even when the car engine is off. If you want your light bar to be powered on when the car engine's off. All right, so I'm gonna put the black here on a grounded bolt of the chassis. And then the hot, I'm just gonna poke into the fuses and see when these numbers get greater than zero. So I'll try the first one, hopefully you can see. Okay, that looks hot. 18, 17, and 16, they all look hot. Now I'm just taking the hot wire here, putting it into the add a fuse circuit, buck connector, whatever these things are called. All right, so the light bar and the inline fuse is a 15 amp, but this thing's not supposed to go over 10 amps, so I'm gonna use a 10 amp and see how it goes. Hopefully we won't have any issues. All right, that's in there. And then I connected the wiring harness, or the switch to it. So now you can see. And when I flip the switch, there we go. So there you have it. Cheap DIY light bar rack with 30 bucks from Home Depot for the LED light bar. I did have some parts at home, so it was a little cheaper than if I was starting from scratch. But if you're doing a van build, you probably have these parts anyway. But if you have any questions, drop a comment below. Now I'm just gonna be uh, zip tying all the wires together and making sure they're nice and tight. But it was relatively easy of an install. So if you wanna save some money and get a light bar on your van, it's a cheap way to do it. Now today I'm gonna be working on the next modification to the van. 
We just got our van wheels upgraded and they look so good. Here's a before and after, and I'm just so stoked how they came out. The only problem is, is that the spare tire wheel well is too small for a larger tire. The all-terrain tires that we just got are larger than the stock tires, so we need to make a modification to that wheel well, which is a lot cheaper than buying an adapter for your spare tire for like the back door or something similar. So let me show you how we did this modification so you can do the same if you decide to upgrade your wheels. The first thing you need to do is open the back doors, take off these little latches or clips, whatever, and then it's a 19 millimeter bolt to here that will lower the spare tire underneath the van. You just lift this up, push this over, and then the wheel drops down. Okay, so now I need to take this bracket off so I can take this thing completely out. And it's just two bolts on both sides, and we'll get this off and we'll get this fit around the, the wheel, and I'll have to extend this down a little bit so that the tire can sit flush against here because the stock. The tire is too thick and this needs to be lowered. All right, so it's a 13 millimeter. All right, round two. It's probably just gonna drop on me. It's really simple. Okay, okay. So next objective is to get this tire fitted into here. So I think I'm going to have to expand this out, stretch it. We'll see. Ugh. All right, so that looks like it actually fits. Cool. So I don't think I need to do any stretching. If you had a 17 inch wheel, you upgrade your tires, you would have to stretch this out and pull it that way. But this tire fits perfectly actually. Perfect. And this is a 265, 75, uh, 16 inch rim. So I'm gonna use a bar of aluminum that's gonna extend this down. All right, so basically what we're gonna do, we're gonna put a piece of aluminum right here and extend this down to bolt this to here. So we're just dropping it one one hole. It's about an inch and a half we're dropping it. My aluminum bar fitted in between here, right? So you're gonna have one, two, three, four holes in the aluminum. And on the other side, I just put the bolt in and then I just got a marker and colored in the holes for each spot. So I'm gonna measure it and it should be like an inch and a half. And then that's where I'll make my drill holes and then we'll get this cut and then this will extend it down an inch and a half. All right, so we got our holes punched in. We got our extra bolts. Now it's time to put these brackets in place and see if we can get that in. Here we go. All right, starting with the passenger side. Wish me luck. All right, so that's in. This doesn't feel like it's really going anywhere. I have number eights, I think. I actually can't remember. But I have a washer, two washers and a locking washer. This is all 13 millimeter. All right. So easy. We got this side all set ready to go. I had to drill this one a little bit bigger because my hole was off a bit. And then on this side as well, we got all four in nice and tight. It's ready to roll. Now we're just gonna drop this and we're ready to go. Now I gotta get the tire onto that in position 
and get it into place. We'll see. Wondering which way I should do it. All right, it's in there. Let's see if we can get it up. She said. That was easy. I just gotta bolt this up. Wow. I was not expecting it to be that easy. I'm pumped. Here's the 19 mil. Tighten it back up. Super easy. Not bad. Tire's done. Don't have to worry now. Also, forgot to film it, but you might want just some undercoating under there just to prevent rust. We're using aluminum and stainless steel bolts and screws, but rather be safe than sorry. I don't want to lose the tire. All right, guys, so that wraps up the tire modification. If you have any questions about it, let me know. It's relatively simple and very similar to the LED light bar rack. It's just the, the same aluminum bar that I used for the light rack, the light bar rack, as I did for the spare tire mount. So, yeah, not too bad. Now it's time for an oil change and a fuel filter change, which I'll get to, but I'm not gonna go into full detail because I already filmed an entire episode on how to do your oil change on your sprinter van. I'll leave the link to the video in the description below. Alright guys, so that wraps up the van upgrades. We have the van all packed and ready to go. It's time to get out of here and hit the road and start the journey out west. We'll see you probably in Colorado. Stay tuned.